Welcome back class. We are going to uh, get started with our class for today. Uh, we are in uh, week number uh, 13, class number 13. Um, I hope and pray that everybody has been having a good week uh, there in uh, New York and hopefully everything has been going good for you and you've been uh, growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior uh, Jesus Christ. It's good to be back. And so let's uh, get started with our class, with our lectures for today. Um, but before we get started, um, notice uh, with me there on your notes um, that we want to look at some announcements. And you already know that I always like to uh, start class this way, just to share with you guys um, some announcements, uh, just to give you guys a heads up of what is going to be due and what is going to be expected of you uh, in terms of the homework. And so uh, notice with me, uh, first, um, you're going to be focusing on Daniel chapter uh, 10 and also uh, Daniel chapter 11 this week, uh, because we're actually uh, going to be covering, as we mentioned last week, uh, two chapters today. Uh, chapter 10 and 11. And so you're going to be uh, focusing on that in your reading of the Bible, chapter 10 and 11. And then when it comes to the Wolverd commentary, uh, you're also going to be uh, covering chapter uh, 10 and also chapter 11. And so that's going to be your uh, reading assignment. Remember, um, this is for a grade. And, and so you will be reporting uh, your reading uh, on the final, and so make sure not to procrastinate, not to uh, wait for the last minute, but, but make sure to set, a, some, some, set aside some time and uh, read uh, Daniel 10 and 11 and Wolverd 10 and 11. Uh, third, notice um, that our final exam for the class is coming up, and um, what I want to do, my plan is to have it finished um, by early next week. Um, so, so, so most definitely, um, unfortunately, on the final exam, uh, there will be no questions regarding the last lecture, uh, which will be on Daniel chapter 12. But, but everything we have covered um, from the midpoint, uh, the midterm, all the way to today uh, will be on the final exam. I'm hoping uh, to get it done early next week, and so you guys will have more than enough time to start it, to work on it, and it will not be due until the final day of the semester, really the last class of the semester, uh, which would be Friday, May 17th. And so I'm hoping to get it done, hopefully by Monday. Um, that's my plan, that's the goal. Uh, sometimes plans change, but um, I'm going to do my best and I'll get that email to you guys uh, early next week. And, and then remember, it's open book, open notes, open Bible. Um, the only thing I ask is that you work on it by yourself. Most definitely it's not a group uh, test. And, 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 and if you guys are already familiar with the midterms and the finals that I give, I like them being more just like a review of everything we have covered and some of the main points, um, the, the main material that we have covered in the class. And so it's not really even like a test, it's more like a review and, and just covering some of those main points that I, I, I really want uh, you to remember as you go forward in your Christian walk. Uh, notice the last thing, I just wanna kinda give you guys a reminder of what our schedule is going to look like as we are now finishing up uh, the school semester. Uh, today, the plan is to cover chapter 10 and 11. Chapter 10 and 11. And so there's going to be most definitely two parts to the lecture today. Uh, we're going to have part one, which would be class 13. Um, and we're going to focus on chapter 10 of the book of Daniel. And then I'm also going to give you guys already um, part two, which would focus on uh, Daniel chapter 11. We're going to cover that also today. And that technically would be a class number 14. That's how it's going to be labeled 
uh, on the YouTube account. And then next week, um, we'll actually finish up with um, class number 15, even though it's only week 14. And so if I'm not confusing you, don't worry, there's not going to be a test on this. Um, and we'll actually just finish up the book, Daniel chapter 12. And the reason why um, we're going to do it that way is because a few of you have reached out to me and you are going to be coming down to Marietta uh, for the graduation. And so that, that last week, uh, week 15 of the semester, uh, there's going to be some traveling, there's going to be uh, some things going on. And so um, just to make your life easier and also my life a little easier, um, we're just going to kind of end the lectures, the class a week early, and then you guys will just have that, that final week to, to travel if you're coming to the graduation or if you're not to uh, finish up uh, your reading and your final. And so I think it's a good way to approach it and that's the way we're going to do it. And so uh, those are the announcements. Uh, like always, if you have a question, you have a concern, uh, shoot me an email. Uh, let me know. I'm here to serve you, help you in any way that I can. And so let's get into our lecture, the first part of our lecture, and we are going to be in Daniel chapter 10. And so if you have your Bibles, uh, turn with me to Daniel chapter 10. And what I want to do, like always, is I want to begin by reading the chapter, verses 1 through 21, and then we will look at a few things that we see and learn from the text. Daniel chapter 10, uh, let's begin in verse 1. Let's read all the way down to verse 21. And like always, I'll be reading out of an ESV uh, translation version of the Bible. But whatever you're using, whatever you have, please just follow me. And this is what the word says. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel, who was named Belshazzar, and the word was true, and it was a great conflict, and he understood the word and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, that is the Tigris, I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a man clothed in linen with a bout of fine gold from Uphaz around his waist. His body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and the sound of his words like the sound of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great trembling fell upon them, and they fled to hide themselves. So I was left alone and saw this great vision, and no strength was left in me. My radiant appearance was fearfully changed, and I retained no strength. Then I heard uh, the sound of his words, as, this, as I heard the sound of his words, I, and as I heard the sound of his words, I fell on my face in deep sleep with my face to the ground. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you sent your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and they have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, so I was left there with the kings, for I was left there with the kings of Persia, and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision is for the days yet to come. When he had spoken to me according to these words, I turned my face toward the ground and was mute. And behold, one in the likeness of the children of man touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke. 
I said to him who stood before me, O oh my Lord, by reason of the vision pains have come upon me and I retain no strength. How can my Lord's servant talk with my Lord? For now no strength remains in me and no breath is left in me. Again, one having the appearance of a man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O oh man, greatly loved, fear not, peace be with you. Be strong and of good courage. And as he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Then he said, Do you know why I have come to you? But now I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go out, behold, the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is inscribed in the book of truth. There is none who contends by my side against these except Michael, your prince. Amen. That is the word of the Lord. And so we are going to be covering Daniel chapter 10. Now, as we arrive to chapter 10 in our study of the book of Daniel, we come to uh, the final vision, or we could say the final prophecy found in the book of Daniel. Uh, if you recall, we said that uh, one of the ways uh, the book of Daniel is divided is into two major sections. You have chapters 1 through 6, uh, which would be known as the historical section, and then you have chapters 7 through 12, which is uh, typically known as the prophetic section. And, and so these, these final three chapters of the book, chapters uh, 10 through 12, uh, really record for us the final prophecy that Daniel received in this prophetic section of the book. Uh, these three chapters uh, really record for us uh, one single prophecy. They are uh, connected, and, and really they are uh, three parts uh, to a whole. Uh, chapter 10 is what we would call the introduction. It, it really just sets up the prophecy, the vision that Daniel receives. Uh, chapter 11, all the way to um, chapter 12, verse 4, uh, records the prophecy for us. And then really chapter 12, uh, beginning in verse 5, all the way to the end of the chapter, is what we would call the, the conclusion or the closing thoughts of the prophecy. Uh, many would call it the, the epilogue of the book and of the prophecy. Uh, as we have been progressing through the book of Daniel, we've seen that, that the, the, the visions and the prophecies that Daniel receives and records have really been increasing in length and they also have been increasing in complexity. And, and so here in these final chapters with this final vision, with this final prophecy that Daniel receives, uh, really we find the longest vision, the longest prophecy in the book, and in my opinion, and really in the opinion of, of many who study the book of Daniel, this would also be the most complex prophecy and vision found in the book of Daniel, uh, especially chapter 11. Chapter 11, I'll just confess with you, it's not the easiest chapter to interpret and to understand and to teach. Uh, because there's so many details that Daniel was told concerning uh, future world events and world history. And so chapter 11 is, is, is not the easiest prophecy and chapter to understand. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my best, and we're going to get into this in our second part of class, but I'm going to do the best to give you a basic overview of the chapter, of the prophecy, and, and help you understand uh, some of the, the main components, some of the main uh, pieces of the prophecy. Now, now, unfortunately, because of time, we're not going to be able to study the prophecy in detail and in depth, but most definitely as you read uh, your, your textbook, as you read the commentary of Wolverd, 
Wolver does an excellent job in, 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 in speaking and interpreting uh, the prophecy. He, he, he gives an excellent treatment of that prophecy. And really, in, in the commentary, you're going to find all of the details, all of the dates, all of the names, all of the events that Daniel records in Daniel chapter 11 with uh, this first prophecy. But we're going to get into chapter 11 uh, in our second half of the class. But for right now, we're just going to focus on chapter 10. And we're really going to focus on the introduction of the prophecy and the vision that Daniel received of a heavenly messenger, of an angel. And so let's begin. And, and what I want to do for this first part of class for chapter 10, I simply want to share with you, uh, like always, a few things that we see and learn from our text. And, and specifically, we're going to be focusing on this heavenly messenger that Daniel saw here in chapter 10. In my opinion, this is an amazing portion of scripture. It teaches us so much about angels, heavenly messengers, and about their ministry. And, and it also, as we're going to see, it, it teaches us about the spiritual warfare, the spiritual battle that is taking place in the invisible world, the spiritual realm. And so this is an amazing chapter, and I want to share with you a few things that we see and learn from it. And like always, I got some headings I want to give you. I want to give you an outline of the chapter. I got three main things I want you to see with me in this chapter. And let's begin first in uh, chapter 10, uh, verses 1 through 9. Now, we're not going to read the text again. We already read it. But the first thing I want you to see here in verses 1 through 9 is the appearance of the heavenly messenger. The appearance of the heavenly messenger. Uh, that's really the first thing we see and learn here in chapter 10. Uh, the appearance of this heavenly messenger, Daniel gives us a description of the angel that appeared before him. Now notice in verse 1 with me again, there in your Bibles, that we're told that in the third year of King Cyrus, a word was revealed to Daniel, and the word was true. And then notice Daniel says, and it was a great conflict. Or another way to understand that, it was about a great conflict. Now, the third year of King Cyrus was approximately in the year 536 B.C., before Christ. Uh, we would say approximately two years after the events of Daniel chapter 9. Now, now most definitely, by uh, this time... And listen carefully uh, to this. The Jews have already been given permission to uh, uh, return to the land of Israel. And they've already been given permission to uh, rebuild the temple. And so at this point in history, at this point in biblical history... Uh, the Babylonian captivity is officially over. The Jews have been given permission uh, to leave Babylon and, and, and to return to the land of Israel and to rebuild the temple there in Jerusalem. And, and so many Jews, and, and, and approximately 50,000, uh, they actually returned and they began to rebuild the temple. However, we, we learned that not all of the Jews returned, but some of the Jews uh, chose to remain in the land of Babylon. And notice, one of them was Daniel. Daniel didn't return uh, to the land of Israel, but he actually remained in Babylon. Now, this is always the question that is asked, more, more probably out of curiosity than anything else, if Daniel was praying for the Jews to return to the land of Israel, 
uh, in Daniel chapter 9, if he was passionately uh, praying for, for God to fulfill uh, the words of the prophet Jeremiah and for God to have mercy and to return uh, the, the people to the land of promise, the question is, why then didn't Daniel return? When, when, when Cyrus finally gave uh, permission, when, when he, he gave the decree that they were allowed to return, why didn't Daniel go with them? And that's, that's uh, a great question. And the truth is we don't really know. We don't really know why Daniel stayed. I have my opinion. I have my theory. And, and I, I probably would say that it had something to do with his age. And it also probably had something to do with his position um, in, in, in the empire, in the government there in Babylon, which would have been, at this point, the Syrian empire. Uh, because at this point, Daniel is uh, probably well over 80 years old. He has been in, in Babylon, most definitely, for at least 65 years. And so probably his age made it a little difficult to make the trip. <laughs> and also uh, his position, because remember, Daniel was a high-ranking state official in the Persian Empire. And, and, and probably Daniel understood that he would be of a greater help uh, to his people if he remained in his position. Because he had a very high position of power, of influence. And I'm pretty sure he, he understood that, that he can be a greater blessing to others if he remained as a government official. But, but to be honest, we don't really know why Daniel didn't return. We, we just know that there's no record of him returning. And so during the, during the third year of King Cyrus, we're told that a word was revealed to Daniel, and that this word was about a great conflict. And the idea there is probably the conflict that is going to take place in Jerusalem. And so a word revealed to Daniel, this word is about a great conflict, and the idea there is, is the conflict that will be taking place uh, in the Holy Land, in the land of Israel, in Jerusalem. Uh, because if you recall Daniel, from at this point, Daniel has been receiving uh, various prophecies and visions concerning the events that are going to take place in Jerusalem and amongst the Jews and in the Holy Land. And as we have been learning, much of what he has received has to do with conflict, has to do with wars, has to do with abomination and desolation and and really has to do with a lot of crazy stuff that will take place in the land of Israel. And so Daniel now tells us he received another word from the Lord. And when he understood the word and when he had understanding of the vision, notice in verses 2 and 3, we're told that Daniel mourned for three weeks. Now, how should we understand that? Simply this way, uh, the word that Daniel received and the word that he understood was so overwhelming for him. It was such a heavy burden. It was so emotionally taxing for him that literally for three weeks, he mourned and fasted over the vision that the Lord revealed to him. However, after the three weeks, Daniel tells us, notice in verse 4, that he was standing by the bank of the great river Tigris. And there he tells us he lifted up his eyes and he saw a man clothed in linen. Now, now immediately as we read the description of this man, we're able to understand that, that even though Daniel refers to him as a man, 
he's not really a man, as we would understand. He's not a human, but really this is a heavenly being, a heavenly messenger uh, that, that Daniel sees here. This is an angel who, who at, at least at the beginning gave an appearance of a man. But, but as Daniel begins to describe him, right away we know this is not a human. This is not someone from this world. This is not a man, but this is a heavenly being, an angel of the Lord. Notice that Daniel in his description tells us that this angel was clothed in fine linen, that he had a belt of fine gold, that his body was like beryl, his face was like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like bronze, and the sound of his words like the sound of a multitude. Uh, really here, Daniel receives a glorious vision of a glorious heavenly angel. In fact, notice that the vision was so amazing and the glory of this angel was so overwhelming that Daniel tells us that when he saw this angel, no strength was left in him. His, his strength, his energy was literally sapped from his body. And he tells us that he literally fell on his face in deep sleep with his face to the ground. You know, whenever I, I read that, I always say to myself, we, we, we need to be careful that the next time we say that we wished we were able to see an angel. You know, there's some, there's some believers that have that, that mentality that, that, man, I wish I was able to see an angel or I wish I was able to see a heavenly messenger and I think, I think when, when people say that, they don't really understand uh, what they're talking about. I think we have to be careful because notice uh, Daniel's reaction to this vision of this heavenly messenger. He, he literally was, was sapped of all the strength from him and he fell on his face in deep sleep, this face to the ground. The idea there probably is he fainted. It was just so overwhelming. Now, let me say this, and let's talk a little bit about this description and this angel, uh, because what we find here with this description here in Daniel 10 is we find a very similar description that John gives us of the Lord Jesus in Revelation 1, that the descriptions are very, very similar. They're, they're not the same, but there seems to be some similarities between the two. Now, now because of those similarities, unfortunately, uh, sometimes uh, people will say, students of the Bible will say, that, that Daniel, here in chapter 10, uh, receives none other than a vision of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so some would say that Daniel chapter 10, Revelation chapter 1, the descriptions are so similar that it must be the same person. And some, so some would say that what Daniel is seeing here is none other than an appearance of the Son of God in the Old Testament. Now, I believe that most definitely on, on certain occasions, Jesus does appear in the Old Testament. And, and we know those appearances as theophanies or, or, or better Christophanies. And really what they are are temporary appearances of the Son of God in the Old Testament. And typically when, 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 when we find those appearances, we see Jesus uh, appearing or, or being referred to as the angel of Jehovah. But, 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 but when we read about those appearances, clearly uh, the context teaches us 
that, that, that this angel of Jehovah is so much more than an angel, but, 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 but he's always connected with God, with the very presence of God to such a degree that, that the people understood that it was God himself who was appearing to them. And, and so I do believe we see uh, temporary appearances of the Lord in the Old Testament, uh, theophanies, Christophanies, but most definitely, in my opinion, I don't believe this angel here is speaking of Jesus. This is not Jesus here in Daniel chapter 10, but this is simply an angel. We would say a glorious heavenly angel sent by God to give Daniel a message. Now, now, if that's the case, the question is, then, then why is this angel so glorious? Why is the vision of this angel so overwhelming for Daniel? And we would just say, the reason why this angel is so glorious is because God is so glorious. God, God is, is so overwhelming and glorious. And, and, and really, this angel is simply a reflection of the glory of God. This, this angel is a servant of God. He's a minister of God. This angel most definitely has been in the presence of the Lord. He has been in the throne room of God, and now he is being sent by God to minister to Daniel, to reveal insight and understanding to Daniel, and his glory is simply a reflection of of the glory of God. It's not that he has glory in it of himself, but he merely is reflecting God's glory. And so he is glorious because God is so glorious. He reflects the glory of God in the same way that we are called as Christians to reflect the glory of God. Uh, servants should always reflect their masters. And, and, and the same is true for this angel. He is reflecting his master, God Almighty. And the same is true for us as believers. We, we must also reflect our master. We must always reflect uh, the Lord Jesus, that, that uh, the Lord Jesus, his love, his, his light, his glory should always be reflected from our lives. And so the question is, I think for all of us, is how, how are we reflecting Christ? Are we reflecting the glory of God? Are we reflecting the love, the life of Christ? When, when, when people see us as believers, what exactly are they seeing? What, what is our testimony? What is our testimony to uh, a lost and dying world? Do, do people see Christ in us? Do people see the love of Christ, the, 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 the glory of Christ, the reality of Christ, or do they see something else? This, this angel is glorious because God is glorious, and uh, to a certain degree, we we should reflect glorious lives because Jesus is glorious and we are his servants. Now, now let me say this before we move on to our next point. The Bible, as I'm sure you all know, the Bible says a lot about angels. Uh, our, our doctrine, our theology of angels found in the Bible is extensive. Angels are very active in Scripture, but, but every time that they are presented, every time they are uh, spoken of, they are always presented as servants of God, as messengers of God. They are always presented in a context of carrying out the plans and purposes of God. Uh, according to uh, Hebrews 1.14, uh, angels are ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit 
salvation. And so angels are powerful. Angels are glorious. Angels are intelligent. But listen to this. At the end of the day, angels are not God. Angels are not in the same category or on the same level of God, by no means. But angels are, are simply servants of God. They are simply messengers of God. And, and so our attention, at the end of the day, our attention should never be on angels, but our attention should always be on the one who created the angels, God. Our attention should always be on God. Our, our worship should always be on the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I love what um, the book of Revelation teaches us, Revelation 19, 9 and 10, uh, after John received a, a vision and he was told by the angel who was kind of guiding him throughout the book, Write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. John tells us that this took place. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. He was so blown away by, by the revelation, by the visions, by the truth that he was hearing that, that his only response was to worship. But, but unfortunately, he tried to worship the angel. And notice what we read, but he said to me, you must not do that. The angel immediately rebukes John and says, hey, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus worship God. That's what the angel tells John, worship God. He says, hey, at the end of the day, I'm just a servant like you. I'm just one of your brothers don't, don't, don't focus on me. Don't, don't give me worship. Don't, don't, don't give me attention. But you must always give all the attention, worship, glory to God. And so we see the, the, the appearance of the heavenly messenger. Now notice second. The second heading I want to give you is the battle of the heavenly messenger. And we see that in verses 10 through 14. The battle of the heavenly messenger. Uh, we would say the spiritual battle, the spiritual warfare that this heavenly messenger is involved in. And this is really where it gets really, really interesting in verses 10 through 14. Because notice as Daniel was on his face trembling, <laughs> really overwhelmed by just, just the appearance of this heavenly messenger, he tells us that the angel touched him and told him uh, basically not to be afraid because he had been sent to Daniel by God not to harm him but to give him understanding. And then notice in verses 12 through 13 that the angel tells Daniel something very, very interesting. He tells Daniel that from the first day Daniel began to seek the Lord in prayer and fasting, God heard him. God heard Daniel, the prayers of Daniel, and God sent the angel to bring understanding to Daniel. However, and look with me again in verse 13, the angel literally tells Daniel that when he was sent by God, the prince of Persia, notice this, withstood him for 21 days until finally Michael, one of the chief princes, came to his aid and he helped him. And with the help of Michael, finally the angel was able to get to Daniel. Now, now that, that description, those, those verses are really, really interesting and, and this is the idea here, and pay careful attention to this. In verse 13, the prince of Persia is not a literal human prince, as we would know, but is actually a reference to what we would call a demonic spirit, a fallen angel, a powerful fallen angel, who in some way or somehow 
is, is influencing or, or governing or assigned the kingdom of Persia. And, and I, I believe that, that the context makes that clear. When this angel was sent by God, this heavenly angel, this, this demonic spirit, this, this prince of Persia, he literally began to fight him. He began to battle against him. He, he began to try to, to stop him from getting to Daniel, stop him from fulfilling the plans and purposes of God. Uh, until finally we're told that Michael, uh, the archangel, the chief of the heavenly angels, he came to the rescue and he delivered this angel from the prince of Persia, from, from this demonic spirit who is connected and associated with the kingdom of Persia. And, and so really with, with these verses, uh, like no other place in the Old Testament, we're, we're given uh, a picture, we're given an understanding of the spiritual battle that is taking place amongst the spirit realm. The, 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 these verses, in, in a very real way, they, they kind of uh, remove the veils and, and open the window, and they help us understand that there's a battle going on, a battle against light and darkness, a battle against heaven and hell, a battle against angels and demons, and uh, that there is an enemy, and this enemy is, is organized, and this enemy is structured, and, and this enemy is powerful, and this enemy has an army, and, and, and they are committed to, to thwarting, to stopping God's plans, God's purposes. They, they are committed to, to destroying the people of God. And, and, and really, this, this text gives us a little preview, a little taste, a little, a little idea of the spiritual battle taking place in the heavenly realm. And, and as we get to the New Testament, and as we get uh, to passages like Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, uh, really, we really were, we're given a little more information, a little more detail, and we're able to understand that, that we are in the middle of, of a battle, of a war, that, that as believers, the, the, the Christian walk is not a walk in the park. It's not a stroll on the beach, but, but it's, a, it's a fight, it's, it's a battle. We, we, we find ourselves right in the middle of a cosmic battle, and, and we have enemies, and, and, and there is an enemy of our soul who seeks only to, to rob us and, and, and destroy us and thwart to stop God's plans and purposes for our lives. And always the exhortation is that we have to be ready, uh, we have to be prepared, and, and, and Paul would tell us that we have to put on the whole armor of God. Because like, like soldiers, we must always be prepared. But, but the Bible also teaches us that, that, that when it's all said and done, we, we have victory in Christ. That there is an enemy, but, but this enemy is no match for God. This enemy is not on the same level with God. But God is sovereign. God is ruling and reigning. God, God is all-powerful and all-mighty. And God will fulfill his plans and purposes. We have an enemy, but, but, but he is a defeated enemy. He is a doomed enemy. He is an enemy whose time is short, and ultimately we have the victory in Christ, but, but, but we must not be lazy. We, we must not uh, take anything for granted, but we must always stay near to Christ. We must always uh, stay, stay in our word and, and, and stay in prayer because there is a war going on. And, and in these verses, we get a little a little taste, a little, a little understanding of, of the real battle that's taking place. 
Now, now to finish up this chapter, notice the ministry of the heavenly messenger, the ministry, and that's in verses 15 through 21. We see the appearance, we see uh, the battle, the warfare, but now notice the ministry to finish up this chapter. As Daniel sees this angel and hears uh, from him, he's totally overwhelmed and, and literally his strength is zapped from him. However, notice uh, that, that, that in the chapter we see that this angel is not sent to harm Daniel, but to serve Daniel, to help Daniel, to minister to Daniel, to, to give understanding and insight to Daniel. And, and to finish our time in this chapter, I want to share with you three ways that this angel ministered to Daniel. And, and really this angel is an example, is a model for us as we seek to minister to others. Because in the same way this angel ministered to Daniel, uh, this is the same way that we should seek to minister and serve others. And I want to give you three things really quick, and then we will finish up and you'll take your break, and then we'll come back for part two. Uh, first, notice in verses 12 and 19 that this angel brought comfort to Daniel. Uh, for we read, fear not, Daniel, O man greatly loved, fear not, peace be with you. Daniel was afraid. Daniel was overwhelmed. Daniel was burdened, but this angel brought comfort, brought rest, brought peace to the heart of Daniel. And, and this is the, the connection. This is the application. In the same way as we minister, as we serve others, we should always seek to bring comfort, peace, rest, we should always show compassion. We, we should not be the ones who, who, who put burdens and, 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 and boulders on, on others, but we should be the ones who seek to try to relieve those burdens and relieve those boulders. We, we, we should be ministers of peace. Ministers of peace uh, sent out with, with the gospel of peace by the Prince of Peace, a ministry of comfort. And then notice second, the angel brought strength to Daniel. He brought strength. Look at verses 18 and 19. Again, one having the appearance of a man touched me and strengthened me, and he said, O man, greatly loved, fear not, peace be with you. Be strong and of good courage. And as he spoke to me, I was strengthened. Uh, this vision of this angel literally saps and, and sucks all the strength out of Daniel. But we're told that, that one of the things that the angel did was he brought strength to Daniel. This angel strengthened Daniel and he gave Daniel the strength he needed to receive the vision, to receive the prophecy. And, 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 and this is the connection. In the same way, as we minister, as we serve, we should seek to bring strength to others. We should seek to bring energy and encouragement to others. In other words, our, our ministry should be one of building up and not breaking down. We shouldn't seek to break one another down or, or destroy one another, but, but we should always seek to build each other up, to, to edify one another, to, to encourage one another, to exhort one another, and to, and to give strength, to give strength. Uh, sadly, there, there's some believers that, that instead of giving strength, they, they take strength, they, they sap the strength, the energy out of a pastor, out of a church leader, but, but may that not be us. May we be known for, for giving strength to others, encouraging. That's the idea, and a, and a ministry of encouragement that we would be known as, as, as Barnabases, as sons of encouragement. And then notice third, this angel brought understanding to Daniel. He brought understanding. Notice verse 11 and verse 21. O Daniel, man, greatly love, understand the words that I speak to you, and then verse 21, but I will tell you what is inscribed 
in the book of truth. This angel, this angel was sent to Daniel to help him understand the vision, the prophecy, the revelation that God had given him, the plans and purposes for the nation of Israel that God had for them. He, he was sent to bring understanding. He was going to bring understanding and insight to Daniel. And this is the connection. Like this angel, we too should always seek to bring understanding to others. Understanding of the Word of God. Because as I'm sure you guys have figured out, there's a lot of people out there who have honest, genuine, sincere questions. Questions concerning God. Questions concerning the Word of God. Questions concerning uh, matters of, of faith and, and doctrine and of truth. There's many questions out there, and God wants to use us to bring understanding. God wants to use us to help others uh, to, 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 to discover truth. The Holy Spirit wants us to be His instruments of, of, of truth, that we would uh, bring understanding of the Word, that we would proclaim the truth, and that we would help others to see that truth by the grace of God and with the help of the Holy Spirit. And so this angel has a ministry of comfort, a ministry of strengthening, and a ministry of bringing understanding. And like this angel, that, that should be our ministry. That, that's what we should seek to do as we serve the Lord, as we serve the body of Christ. We should always seek to bring comfort, to bring strength, and to bring understanding to all those that God places in our path. And we do it all for the glory of Christ. At the end of the day, we are servants, and there is no higher calling than being a servant of Jesus Christ. And so that is Daniel chapter 10. Uh, what if we take a, a small break, uh, 10, 15 minutes, or however long you guys normally take, and then we're going to come back and we are going to do and focus on Daniel chapter 11, um, which would be uh, lecture number 14. But let's take a break and I will see you shortly. Grace and peace.